Cool. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I threw out some invites for other contributors who may want to join us on stage. If anyone else wants to be up here, please go ahead and uh, raise your hand, and we'll be glad to invite you up. Awesome. Okay, I guess let's uh, let's kick this off. You ready, Big Sky? You ready, Pujamac? Yeah, I'm hyped. Let's do it. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, yeah, welcome to the Pony Finance Community Call. This is our second community call, so uh, we're so psyched to have you guys here. I'm Robin. I'm a contributor to Pony. I've been working in the DeFi space since 2018. So I have a little bit of, uh, you know, contributions under my belt with a few different protocols and DeFi projects. And now I'm so happy to be here at Pony. And let's uh, just kind of do a round of intros. Hey, guys. Yep. GM, GM. Bit of intro on myself. Uh, Pujima underscore and on all socials. Been in DeFi for almost a year plus. Um, contributed in multiple DAOs uh, prior. Um, currently, you know, uh, super stoked about what's what's been going on with Pony and 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 in Pony uh, Finance. I'm currently uh, heading the community side of it. So, yep, that's a brief intro on me. Maybe some microphone problems for Big Sky. I'm not sure. Uh, we're not hearing anything. But um, Ox Rikas, uh, please give us a little intro. I think it's the same problem, Robin. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's go. Let's take a let's take a beat and see if we can uh, fix this audio really quick because we definitely want to hear from y'all. Hey, can can anyone hear me? Yeah, I can Hi. hear you. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I had pushed the talk and I I, I enabled it a few a while back. So I'll, I'll I'll introduce myself. So my name is Rick. I'm a contributor at Pony Finance for a while now. I'm uh, I'm helping out a bit on the on the Pony DAO structure and community side of things. Um, I fell in love with the with Pony Finance since day one of hearing about it and. That's mainly because I, I personally, before even hearing about it, I personally loved yield farming. And more specifically, stable yield farming was always um, something I really strived to, to optimize, by myself at least. And um, especially due, due to the last few months market conditions. And so, so yeah, I, that's why I absolutely loved Pony Finance from day one of, about hearing about it. And uh, I'm glad to see the progress done so far by the whole team and, and contributors. And I can't wait to see Pony Finance grow to its full potential. I can see we have a, a a huge audience now listening to the community call, which is always a good sign. So yeah, can't wait for for it. Slowly but surely. Um, yeah, thanks so much for being here. I'm gonna kick it over to Follow Eight, who is joining us from Scolara. Um, please give a brief intro and uh, and welcome. Hey guys, uh, I'm I'm Nate. Uh, I'm with I'm with Scolara. Scolara. If, for those of you who don't know, Scolara is the uh, the index provider behind um, behind Pony. Um, yeah, super excited to be here. Really think that um, Pony and the the token implementation through through Pony Finance is uh, is just kind of the right um, product and, and index and approach to uh, to the crypto space right now. Um, and definitely excited to see um, you know Pony really kind of step out of its its uh, kind of infant stage um, and really grow grow into a thriving community with uh, lots of contributors. Amazing, welcome. Uh, we'll try uh, Big Sky one more time. You want to test your mic? Hello, hello, hello. Yes, we hear you. We have it. I had to uh, had some issues with Discord app. GM, GM, everyone. I hope you are insanely hyped for this call. Um, <laughs> Yeah, if you guys missed the intro, my name's Big Sky. I've been working in DeFi for the last uh, two years or so. Um, I've been the project lead for uh, Pony Finance really since day zero. Um, I see a ton of awesome faces in the crowd of you know people we've worked with. Um, just want to you know give a huge shout out to the community. We have uh, we have seriously seriously scaled this project over the last month, um, and you know we are like laser laser focused on 10xing and 100xing over the next couple of months, and excited to dive in with everybody today. Yes, awesome. Um, psyched for this call. We have one more on stage, Code Mathics, if you want to just give a brief intro. Hey, everyone. Uh, Code Mathics here. Uh, I've been in the first space for about four years now, and I'm part of the Pony uh, contributors, and I work on the design um, units, and I've been helping with um, design collaterals and branding as well, and I'm really excited about the project and GMGM. GM. GM. 
Uh, awesome. So just a little housekeeping on how this uh, call works. We have three chats there in the community call section on the left sidebar of Discord or you know wherever it is if you're looking on mobile. The CC board is just going to be a whiteboard where we're going to just publish any sort of visual elements that we're speaking about or any website links. Uh, so you'll be able to review that after the call or during the call while we're speaking. Um, CC chats is the place to toss your questions or just uh, chat about the call itself. And of course, you could always raise your hand and we will invite you up to the main stage. Um, these community calls are really for everyone, uh, whether you're new to Pony or you're a long time contributor. This is the place to like get on stage, share with us what you're working on, um, ask questions about what's happening. Um, but with that, I will jump right into the agenda. Um, you know, let's just let's just kick into a quick overview of Pony Finance and the Pony Index. Uh, Big Sky, do you do you want to kind of give a, a little high level view of, of what Pony exactly is? Yeah, so, um, you know, when we first started talking about Pony Finance this winter, uh, there were a couple key themes that were really emerging across crypto. Um, one of the themes was it, it was becoming really clear we we're entering a multi-chain world, um, that there were going to be a lot of different layer one blockchains and there needed to be a way for users to access all those blockchains. Another key theme that we, we were encountering was the fact that, um, you know, a lot of the so-called stable coins in the ecosystem um, were, you know, built on extremely not solid foundations. Um, and, and users needed a way to gain access to, you know, actually safe stable coins from across the ecosystem. Um, so, you know, with those two themes in mind, we, 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 we decided to drive forward with, 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 Pony, uh, with Pony Finance. Um, what Pony Finance is, is it is a single ERC-20 token that lives on mainnet Ethereum. Um, and that token holds a basket of stablecoin vault tokens from across the entire DeFi ecosystem, whether it is Phantom, Polygon, Avalanche, um, et cetera. And those tokens are bridged back to mainnet and exist in a single interest-bearing ERC-20 token, uh, the Pony Index. Um, you know, we believe, you know, something I'm incredibly passionate about and I've been very passionate about since, you know, day zero for me in DeFi is providing extremely simple abstractions that allow everybody to gain access to DeFi. And that is exactly what Pony Finance does. Your average person is not gonna be able to stable coin, you know, farm stable coins across, you know, multiple different chains, bridge, bridge, bridge. They want a single click exposure to actually competitive yields. And that's what the Pony Index does. Um, supporting the Pony Index is the Pony Finance DAO, which is um, you know the world's first laser DAO. What that means is our DAO is 100% focused on one thing and one thing only, which is growing the Pony Finance Index. 100% of the streaming fees from the Pony Finance Index accrue to the DAO Treasury and are controlled by the Pony D governance token, um, w w which is how we allocate those funds. So you know if you can't tell, I am insane, insanely excited about this project. Um, I'm insane I'm extremely proud of like the team we've put together and the work that's happened so far. Um, I think you know, going through our docs, our website, our Discord, our Telegram, it's just it's incredible how much work has gone into this project up to this point. And I just can't wait to 10x and 100x from here. Yeah, I think something that is uh, is really awesome to like take into consideration is that how young this project is and how much of an impact it's made so quickly. Um, you know, we we got 1.06 million total value locked right now, according to the uh, the site. You guys may have noticed a little facelift that the website um, has, and also this Discord. Um, we started to include the uh, the spot APY, um, you know, which has been uh, fluctuating. It's a variable yield, so it's been moving between uh, seven and ten percent APY. Of course, it's variable, so it's it's, um, it's reflecting what's happening in every real moment uh, based on the composition and vaults. And then we started including the, the net asset value. Um, and the NAV is uh, kind of like the secret weapon um, if you're involved with the Pony Index in any way. I, I wonder, uh, Nate, can you give us kind of like an overview of why, uh, why anyone interested in Pony would want to track the NAV? Maybe, maybe just kind of a, a high level explanation of exactly what is net asset value? I think, I think the key thing to understand here is that the Pony Index 
um, and the Pony Index token, while highly related, right, and uh, the Pony Index wouldn't have been created without token implementations in mind, those those two things, the index itself and the index token, are, are actually different, right? And so the Pony Index is an, is an index of vaults, um, and then the Pony uh, Index token is a uh, tokenized implementation of the index, um, that actually captures those vaults, puts them in a wrapper on the, the Kuiper protocol, and then is tradable as an ERC-20. Um, so what you'll you'll observe with that is the, the index itself is going to have a NAV, a net asset value. That is the value of the vault tokens that make up the index added up. Now, you might ask yourself, okay, well, shouldn't that almost always be uh, the price of the token. Um, my answer would be yes in perfectly effic efficient markets, but because there is this wrapping process, right, and because those prices are moving all of the time, the actual price of the traded token and the net asset value of the index can vary from time to time. And you see that um, in traditional financial markets with ETFs, that can actually get quite wide. Um, in, in inefficient markets. Um, but what's great about you know tracking the NAV um, and then tracking the price of the token, right, is that as that, that widens out, there's opportunity for sophisticated folks to arbitrage um, those prices. And because DeFi is so efficient, you know you can you can really keep the price of the token really close to the price of the um, the aggregated uh, assets within the index. Amazing. So you said the, uh, I guess, the key word, the arbitrage. I think that there are some folks who are more sophisticated traders who are kind of um, keeping a close eye on the uh, spot trade on Uniswap for Pony um, versus the net asset value, which, as you mentioned, um, is is the accumulation of, of all of the uh, uh, the values within the index itself. Um, is there, I, I guess, other than just like monitoring on, um, on the discord, like just checking daily, I mean, I, I, as I understand it, there's some folks who may be taking advantage of the minting process. Um, maybe, maybe we could share a little bit of context about, um, you know, how Pony the token actually comes to be, um, and how folks in the community if they if they wanted to flex their their DeFi muscles a little bit, can actually take uh, you know everything is transparent, everything is verifiable, um, and we actually provide the directions for minting Pony itself. Um, I, I guess I just wonder if uh, anyone can share like where why would I why would I want to do that? Yeah, I can uh, I can talk through you know kind of the, the the process of creating the actual pony index. So um, the pony index is, as we said, a number of LP tokens from across the entire DeFi, DeFi ecosystem. Um, you know, vaults that live on Phantom, Polygon, Avalanche. Um, so you know how we we we've partnered extremely closely with two key partners. Beefy Finance, which is where the majority of our vaults live, and then uh, Multi-Chain, which is the bridging protocol that we use to bridge these assets back to mainnet Ethereum. So if anybody wants to, you know, say the NAV of uh, the Pony Index itself is way higher than what, or, or like what it's trading at is way higher than the actual NAV, what you can do is you can take your USDC from mainnet Ethereum, bridge it to the composite, to the different chains, uh, deposit in the different LP positions, bridge those LP tokens back to mainnet Ethereum, and then you'll use the Kuiper pro protocol to actually mint um, more Pony Index and ARB those back into the pool. Um, we have a couple people actively uh, market making that pool right now, making sure that we're close to NAV, um, but but it's definitely very lucrative. Uh, you know, it, if, if that's something that people feel comfortable with, it's definitely probably like, advanced DeFi, but you know at the end of the day everything is is, is you know you, you it's, it's very very doable for the for the average user i love that um yeah there's just there's kind of two sides to pony um right there's there's this path for like a more advanced DeFi user who wants to get into um 
get into all the finer details of these uh, partnering protocols that helps launch the project. You mentioned uh, Beefy Finance, we have Multi-Chain um, and Kuiper Protocol as well. Uh, and then there's also the value proposition for just kind of the set it and forget it, the, the stablecoin yield aggregator, the one token investor um, who just wants to get Pony and hold Pony and then have exposure to the index so I, I guess with that, I'd love to kind of get into the detail about the variable um, APY. We've been seeing some swings, um, you know, right now on the side of the Discord, it's saying 6.94%. Um, we're really aiming at launch to, between, to like kick up between 7 to 10. And as I understand it, there may be a potential to go even higher. Um, I wonder, Nate, could you give me some details about um, you know, how Scalara is um, assisting and maintaining the index and, and maybe what we can expect uh, in, in the near future? Sure. So yeah, Pony Pony as conceived um, is 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 really uh, comes comes after Scalara and then you know kind of DeFi Pulse before it has has really um, put put a number of different efforts in trying to crack this um, the crack the code of aggregated uh, DeFi yields, right? Um, and one of the one of the challenges of that is that um you know for for an index product having a lot of turnover um means and especially a lot of turnover um in a product as complicated as essentially aggregated yield vaults right there can often be some some manual um processes needed to build build some adapters to allow for those vaults um to really live inside one token um, that that is you know essentially acts as um, aggregated yield, right? So why why go into the, that detail? Why why say that? Um, basically, um, Pony by design um, allows for slightly more more frequent um, updates, and it's it's intended to really on a I mean the methodology will dictate this. But on a monthly to to kind of every two months basis, rotate some of the vaults that are that are in it, um, because you know it, while it's not a you know chase the the highest yields ever uh, product, that's not its goal. Its goal is like reasonably sustainable yields. Um, there is that is a, a world that is that is ever changing above a, a certain safety level. So what what I think you can expect. Um, in the near future is is rebalancing of of the pony index um, and then re rebalancing that you know once once the um you know have, having tested um it out having having launched the product um a rebalance towards some some more um i, I guess some higher higher apy positions um that's all i could say for now but that's that's kind of how we view it and the, the product was originally conceived of bringing as bringing the best yields um in DeFi back to ethereum mainnet um under one erc20 and that's that's the vision we intend to uh kind of capitalize on execute on amazing i i, I think you know i think we all would love to see higher apys and understand that uh, there's there's no promises in DeFi, but I do feel like this project has a lot of promise. Um, you hit the nail on the head. You you kind of you mentioned um, you know what what is actually happening behind the scenes. How this is this is an aggregation of, of cross chain uh, yields, and a lot of people maybe don't realize that Pony, the Pony Index, and the Pony Token, which is the token representation of the index. Um, you know, that stands for uh, passive omni-chain net yield. Um, and omni-chain is, uh, kind of puts us in this position where we're aggregating all of these yields from multiple ecosystems. Um, these are vaults that have been um, really assessed uh, with like a rigorous set of, um, of screening devices that Scalara has applied um, to make sure that it's 
you know, meeting the mark for uh, not only a healthy chain, a healthy yield farming platform, um, and also a healthy stable coin. Like, you know, we're, we're talking about over collateralized stable coin, uh, nothing crazy, no algorithmic, um, unreliable systems. So you have your methodology in place to apply to all of these different products to be able to aggregate that stable coin yield back to Pony Index. Um, and this is a really, this is a new idea in DeFi. Um, I, 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 Big Sky, I'd love for you to speak to kind of what you would like people to take away or wh what do you want people to be aware of in terms of Pony, the idea of Pony being brand new for the DeFi space? So I think this is something that happens a lot in DeFi is like a project will launch that's doing like truly, truly groundbreaking stuff, but you know, people, don't even realize it right for a few months and that's exactly where pony finance is right now it's like this has never ever been done done before in the history of crypto the history of DeFi. like there was never a product before where you could hold lp tokens from every single other layer one on mainnet ethereum like that is unheard of um and and like it's very exciting for me as like we continue to like really hone in on like the design space and, and what is possible with, with what we have built. Um, and, you know, like alongside that, it's like we're kind of just getting started when it comes to thinking about like what a multi-chain world looks like, what, you know, a layer two world on top of the layer one world looks like. And Pony Finance is perfectly, perfectly situated to be right at the center of basically the most exciting thing that's happening in crypto right now which is this massive prol proliferation of layer twos and alt layer ones and like we bring all of that back to mainnet ethereum which is where the vast majority of users in the future will land and and that's incredibly exciting to me um i think we are you know very very early in building this out and as we continue to expand it i see you know, they're just being more and more change, more and more competitive vaults. And, you know, we will just continually, continually adjust to ensure that we have the best APY in DeFi. And I, I see us scaling tremendously from here and, and really growing this product, um, you know, by 10x, 100x and just continuing to make it bigger and better. Very cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just want to take this moment to uh, encourage anyone on the call listening in um, or anyone in the chats, just throw your questions in. We'll be sure to get to it. Um, or, and if you want to raise your hand, we'll be sure to invite you to a stage. And, and we'd love to hear from anyone in the community about, you know, their experience with not only um, uh, Pony and interacting with the sites. Um, maybe you did some minting. Um, and maybe you're just looking to contribute to the DAO. So, uh, you know, while, while we wait for any questions to come in, Big Sky, I, you just mentioned, you know, we're, we're at this inflection point where we're really bringing awareness to this new DeFi product um, and, you know, what we hope to accomplish with it. But we're also starting to do that, uh, that 10x, <laughs> that 100x. Um, we're working on a DAO in addition to um, bringing awareness to the Pony Index and Pony Token representation as a product. So, uh, you know, maybe you can go into detail, like what exactly is this laser DAO? Um, I mean, we're all in it here on the stage. Maybe some folks listening are, are heavily involved, um, but we are young. We're, you know, five, six weeks young. And I'd, I'd love to hear more about like, what is this laser DAO approach and, and kind of what what do, what's down the line? Like, how how are we scaling, and what's next? You know, when we when we really conceived of the idea of a laser DAO, we we saw there were kind of a number of issues with with you know the the 2019 to 2021 DAO approach. First of all, it was very hard to keep these organizations focused and efficient on like key goals. What we would see is you'd see like a million different you know initiatives kind of all going in different directions, basically being all over the place. Um, and, and our goal with with Pony Finance was to make it extremely tight and extremely focused, and you know really be able to hone in on like what the key drivers are and like what the actual mission of the DAO is. And you know for Pony Finance, the one mission of the DAO is to grow the Pony Index. Token. Like that is it. That is what this DAO does, and it does that incredibly, incredibly well. When I so like when I think about like what 
DAOs are and like where we're going with them. It's like, it's pretty clear to me that we're gonna be like working in DAOs basically for the you know forever right like DAOs are here to stay like this is like a new form of work that is like very very much enabled by um you know crypto economic incentives and is like this is the future but it is so early that like everybody is still figuring out like all the rough edges and like the secret the truth is like all the edges are rough right now everything is hard right now but i think or i know by honing in on a couple key drivers and doing one or two things like right, not just right, like the best in the world right, we will win. And and that's incredibly powerful. Um, and I think it's gonna allow us to compete with both traditional financial organizations, with uh, other DAOs, with other organizations in the space, and it's gonna allow us to win. Um, and, and I'm very, very excited about that. I think, you know, if you're in the crowd, if you're listening, um, this is, this is a great opportunity to really get in on the ground floor and build something incredible. Um, you know, I'm incredibly proud to be part of Pony Finance. I'm excited to have grown it to where it's at, where it's at today. And um, you know, as we continually improve, continually hone in, like the the future is incredibly bright. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'd love to take the opportunity to kind of like toss a question over to Ox Ricos here. Uh, Rick, you you joined Pony Finance early on. Um, and kind of worked through uh, making a name for yourself in this DAO. And now, you know, we're really young, but like you, you kind of hit the ground running. Um, you know, something, uh, I, I'm just so curious to know, like what spoke to you about the product, about like what has your experience been like in joining and, and onboarding and contributing to the DAO? Yeah, so as I was saying, so I, I heard about PonyFi, I was uh, on DeFi, um, a DeFi user, um, like a year back before hear, hearing about Pony Finance. And, uh, and mainly the, the thing that actually called me to DeFi in the first place was um, was yield farming because I always liked uh, stable income and um, and passive income mainly and uh, and then once I heard uh, a friend of mine that was also in DeFi talk about how you could earn uh, earn, earn like crazy yields like for the actually Web2 world uh, crazy yields uh, on stable coins, for me, it was like an, uh, an absurd uh, realization that there's just a lot of potential for, for yields to be, to be generated. And so, so, yeah, I was a user, and as Robin described, uh, there, was, uh, there was obviously a lot of expenditure in, in gas for getting to the different platforms, getting to different protocols. There's a uh, guy that's going to do things even. And, uh, and there's just, and in general, just, just a lot of work to be done to analyze the best products, the best strategies the risk analysis of each one and um and yeah and that's exactly what pony finance aims to facilitate and um as i once said i think the best thing that pony finance brings us is uh, time saving so instead of having to um to use up your time for to search for the best yield opportunities you could just let let it be handled by by a great team that i completely trust <laughs> and and I, I just like have that extra time now to to do a, to do other stuff in, in uh, as my DJ and DeFi path and um, and yeah that's that's exactly how how I how I started contributing as best as I could to the DAO and I've loved the experience so far I think everyone is just so so motivated to 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 grow the product and and I think everyone shares the same passion as me and when they see the DAO grow and they see participants joining in and and AUM rising and yeah and it's it's I mean we're still very early on but it's I think it's it has a ton of potential to grow to to amazing extents. Yes, you uh, you said it AUM rising. Um, I with that I'm gonna toss you. There was a question in the chat in CC chats uh, the gob one. Um, you asked what do you what do you mean? How does the uh, the higher AUM? How is the higher AUM? Good for pony. Uh, good for pony DAO token holders. Um, Big Sky, do you want to kind of like give a quick recap on like exactly what's going on with streaming fees? What's going on with TVL AUM? Um, how do all of these different stakeholders balance? Yeah, one hundred percent. So, so that question is super, super useful. It's super key to like the the entire economic model of this protocol. Um, so, the pony index charges a 90, 90 basis point streaming fee. Um, and that streaming fee accrues to the Pony DAO treasury. So in Pony index tokens, right? So every time, um, you know, 
that that streaming speed fee is charged over the course of a year for like everybody who holds that the index token itself. So that streaming fee accrues to the Pony Dow uh, Treasury, and that will grow over time. So so when you think about it, like the streaming fee right now, like for a pro project when it's still in its infancy, is pretty small, right? Like only only like a few hundred, a few thousand dollars are are like made initially. But when you think about it, like when we grow to a hundred million dollars. Um, that, that streaming fee gets really big. When we grow to a billion dollars, when we grow to $10 billion, um, that streaming fee is gonna get bigger and bigger and 100% of that streaming fee is controlled by the actual Pony DAO uh, governance token holders. So, you know, this is certainly like, not like a get rich quick project, right? Like the goal here isn't for people just to like 100X and get out. The goal is to have, um, you know, ownership and a cash flow that is going to be really, 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 really big over a really, really long term time horizon. I see the Pony Index as being one of the key DeFi prim primitives that people are going to be building off of for years and hopefully decades to come. Um, and a hundred and like you know, throughout that entire future, like all the streaming fees are continually, continually accruing to the Pony DAO uh, Treasury itself. And they're also earning 10%, like whatever APY uh, the Pony Index is earning, because like the streaming fees are Pony are denominated in Pony Index. So we also have a uh, treasury that's continually growing at whatever our APY is. Cool, uh, hopefully that clarifies it. I see um, yet another question. Um, and of, of course, all questions are welcome. That's like what this call is for. Um, so since Pony is aggregating all these yields, um, you know, in a bull market, would high chain congestion uh, affect anything? Um, I think that maybe speaks to, uh, so, you know, often we get the question, like, why, why a layer one? Like, why is Pony implemented on a layer one? Um, you know, there's a couple reasons. Uh, you know, we, we wanted to utilize, um, you know, the Kuiper protocol. Uh, that's native to the Ethereum chain. Uh, so, you know, minting, burning, redeeming is executed uh, on Ethereum. And, and, you know, that said, Pony is permissionless. Um, you know, folks can, folks can, uh, it, it could be bridged to any compatible chain. So I, I think maybe like, let's, let's talk a little bit about like, what, what would be, what would be uh, the future case scenario in terms of high congestion on Ethereum, but also what, what can we look forward to in terms of like multi-chain execution um, and maybe some scaling for Pony? I wonder, um, Nate, maybe you could share a little bit about w how the Pony index uh, is executed on Ethereum and, and maybe what will happen in the future. Yeah, so I think that the question about, um, you know, how we scale it and like what interchain congestion looks like um, is, is you know, a brilliant question, right? And it like really, really harkens back to, you know, some of the core theses that are driving Pony Finance itself. Um, so I think it's very important to acknowledge that we are in like really, really early days of multi-chain bridging. And uh, that is like, you know, we're gonna continually see like multi-chain bridging, like become more and more efficient and more and more uh, like cost cost effective for users. Um, you know, we work really closely with um, the Scalar team to ensure that like we're really only bridging like the, the tokens that we really need for the index and we're doing it like pretty economically, like not like every week. We, we, we do the bridges like once a month. Um, I absolutely see Pony Finance expanding across the entire uh, t entire DeFi ecosystem, whether that's layer ones or layer twos. Um, you know, we're very focused on building mainnet layer one Ethereum uh, liquidity right now specifically in our Uniswap v3 pool which we've had tremendous traction with and tremendous growth or success but like we also really want to expand it like we want um I see our community as being truly multi-chain and like we have to go where the users are and like the reality is like you know multi-chain world is so regionalized so separate like you could have you know hundreds of millions of users on Binance that never touch mainnet Ethereum. And, you know, we want we want to provide the simplest abstractions for users across the entire DeFi ecosystem. That's incredibly, you know, incredibly important to me. And I, I don't want this just to be something that only, you know, people part of like one chain or one community get access to. 
Excellent. I think that makes sense to me. Um, I, I see another question in the chat, uh, Roslyn Beck. Um, what do you think about adding uh, lending protocols to the basket of assets used for the Pony Index? Um, you know, you list some examples, Goldfinch Protocol, Flint, Seashell, uh, any other lending protocol that provides attractive percentage and could be a way for further diversification of the Pony Index. Uh, you know, Scalara is, uh, is the uh, index provider that that's overseeing the selection of of these protocols. So um, I'll throw it to you, Nate. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, you know what's going on behind the scenes in terms of assessing these protocols? Sure. So I think in in order to to throw yields into a basket, um, what you need is these kind of auto compounding vaults. Um, and so I, I I like a lot of the names that that you threw out there. Um, both as, in terms of as as projects and what they're doing, and some of the yields that they provide, and then to your point, uh, kind of really really the diversity of um, yield sources that they provide. Um, but in order to be included in the index, um, they need to kind of be able to be in this vault structure um, that can then be uh, captured and tokenized. Um, you know, through through the token Im implementation, like a Kuiper, um, for which for which the Pony Index was was conceived. Um, you know, as as of now, don't see that. But like the great thing about building a product like Pony um, with a with a methodology that is kind of vault source or yield source agnostic, is that as folks come online with the tech and the ability to create some some auto compounding vaults that um, have some of those protocols as they're kind of in use. Um, you see a, a pony being able to add that to the index and then a pony finance um, being able to add that to the token impl implementation. So look, we have our, our, our eye on these markets and we have our eye on what's possible um, for throwing into a, into a basket. Um, but you know, if, if the, the answer to the question, why not a goldfinch today? Um, my answer, my answer is that it's just this this vaulting and and um, kind of bridging and being able to put it into a basket process. Cool. Uh, thanks for that. Hopefully that answers the question. Um, and also kind of speaks to you know how the index will change um, and the composition will change over time and and we'll we'll continue to kind of see uh, you know future iterations of this product as we as we hammer in. Um, more and more yield across different uh, multi-chain environments. Uh, I see another question in the chat uh, with all the memes about security going on. Uh, can you speak about your security ops at a general level? Um, yeah, I think uh, Big Sky, do you want to jump in and, and kind of talk about a little bit of how we're approaching, um, you know, the launch partners um, and and what what level of, of safety maybe? Um, we're taking into account here. So when, when you're working in DeFi, a good heuristic that I've always come back to is you need to assume that like somebody has their entire life savings in your protocol or somebody has their parents' entire life savings or their family's entire life savings. Like that's like the level of care you need to take. Like there's no there's no margin of error for error here. Like it has to be you you have to be at a hundred percent, and like anything less than that is completely unacceptable. And I and I think you know we we see that across DeFi every day. Um, you know something that we we really pride ourselves in is like we're not like just working with random partners. Like we're working, we you know we we really focus and try to like work with the best in the world, whether that is beefy, whether that is multi-chain, um, you know whether it's any of our partners in the ecosystem, and like making sure that they're like very well vetted and and very uh, secure. Um, there's always significant risk in DeFi. All of this is brand new. All of this is like cutting edge of cutting edge of cutting edge. But um, you know, we 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 are very very focused on that and doing things the right way. Um, I think something else that we, we really rely on that's been an incredible boon for our protocol is the beefy uh, 
vault safety scores. Um, if you go to their website and look at the different vaults we have, that um, they, they have a very thorough analysis of the actual safety of the different vaults they use. And, uh, you know, we really, we definitely lean on that analysis to make sure that, like, only the best and safest and most secure vaults are getting included um, in the actual index itself. Nice. Yes, a beefy as a partner is just kind of just such a get and, and awesome to have them as a part of uh, Pony Finance um, helping with these vault selections because their security on the beefy safety store score or rather their their, their assessment um, for beefy safety score just so helpful. And I have to underscore that all of the vaults um, are, you know, uh, being delivered with beefy. So um yeah i see folks sharing in the chat the the link to the beefy safety score i'll also throw that in the cc board for context um awesome question and great answer i have i have a question if we're not if we're out of chat questions if, yeah if we're taking let's... questions from the panel to the panel <laughs> let's uh, do it big sky and and puji mock and and um xerox I guess, I guess i guess as well what what are you looking for um, help with? You know, where the pony's a DAO, right? Um, I see there's, you know, a, there's a, what's it? There's a want to contribute channel. Um, but where do you see, I have no opinion on this, but I, I want to hear from, from these folks um, what they think. Um, what is what does Pony Finance DAO need? And what does it need most urgently? Um, yeah, I'll stop buttressing the question. I think it's clear. Yeah, um, I, I think I'll initially take this one. Then maybe maybe Big Sky or Rick can add on to that. Yeah, so I I, I think you know um, like like because we we want to push the growth of the Pony Finance ten ten x hundred x and stuff like that, right? So we we do need to find. Uh, communities who, who really are passionate about it. One, 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 one of the things that, that we are definitely looking at is, is, is to grow the, the, the community that we have, the, the engagement that we have. Like, like if, if you do see currently in our server, like it's, it's almost uh, tight in that sense that like we have the, the Pony Index Matrix, we have all the bots in that sense, but you know, it's, it's still a bit quiet here and there. So like having, having, some, having, having you guys coming in who who are also passionate in 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 you know driving the community engagement? I think that's that's one angle of it. But of course, there's there's multiple avenues of it. Like you know, you talk about uh, integrations and and business development uh, that that is spearheading uh, by one of our our uh, you know uh, sorry was, uh, yeah one one of our our key key person Emrings one of it. Uh, but also, you know, um, all, all aspects from marketing, you know, um, content development, um, but also also in terms of dev, you know, uh, development, um, coding and stuff like that. So, so I think is is as as we progress uh, further, you will see more and more uh, processes, especially in terms of onboarding process. But you know, I I think it's we are looking for anybody who is. Who is passionate about growing the the um, pony uh, finance and from there let's let's just grow it together. Um, Big you have anything to add, or Rick? Yeah, I think I completely agree. I, it's it's exactly what you said. We're we're looking for high value contributors. We're looking for um, wh whatever you think you you can you can handle and think you have a, a special a special power in in helping there. Uh, we're looking for you and um, and yeah. No, 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 no help is too much. I think I think high value contributors are something that grows DAOs. And as I said earlier, the the high motivation is something is a key factor for for growing DAOs. And and Pony Finance is no different. So, so yeah, uh, onboarding onboarding new people, high value people, motivated people. That's exactly what we want. So if I'm listening to this and I have a special power, what's my first step? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the first step, you know, um, definitely join our our weekly uh, sync uh, call every Tuesday, uh, just basically to get to know us. And, and from there, I think you know that there is there is a section in Discord called uh, Mercenary District, 
um, interact at the most um, most access to, uh, then then you can basically you know there's there's currently four large or, or four groups uh, ping ping in the chat and and we will connect you with, with with specific tasks and stuff like that well of course it's always a reiterating process so, so you'll see the process becoming more streamlined as the week goes by because it's still relatively new so yeah um, hope that answers your question uh, fellow Nate perfectly thank you guys yeah, as a young DAO, and I think a, a lot of us here have been uh, part of many other DAOs or maybe ambassador programs or just, just contributing on uh, core teams. It's it's kind of, you know, it feels like the Wild West, right? Um, but also like such, such a big opportunity to make a big splash by joining a project, being self-directed and just delivering. Um, I think that's what we see as the most effective contributors so far. Um, less so folks who need uh, a lot of hand-holding, a lot of meetings. Um, that kind of just drags down and, and like adds a lot of um, a lot of time and labor to everybody on the team. But you know, if you have a superpower and you know you're great at creating infographics, you're great at um, taking all the details of this community call and making um, a mirror blog that that details like a high overview of what happened on the call. Uh, maybe you're good at making like cool uh, graphics for Twitter or maybe videos um, showcasing exactly how to mint pony. Um, maybe you just want to cover the project for your own channels and you just need some help in terms of getting logos and letting us facilitate. Um, there's a place for you. And I think that if you're if you're eager to make a big splash, you can in a very short time. Um, and I think, you know, Rick and Pujamak, who's like been completely and, and code mathics here too who've been completely uh tantamount like to building this community and we're so grateful to have them yeah they 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 said it be sure to join the weekly call it's open you can basically join see what's going on see what other people are working on and just start delivering like what you're very good at um and yeah Pujamek just threw in the chat too uh the space guides yes i definitely want to thank the space guides uh some of them here listening on the call they are probably the first person you interact with in this discord and they tell you everything you need to do and point you in the right direction and we we like just wouldn't be here without them so thanks so much you guys cool so i think we're uh we're kicking up to the top of the hour and it's probably time to wrap up uh let me just check make sure we got through all of our pieces on the agenda yeah how to contribute and off to the q a if there's any other lingering questions you could throw it in the chat um and we'll be sure to answer after the call wraps this is being recorded and we'll be uploading it to the pony finance youtube channel as always um i want to shout out to, uh, I think, uh, a contributor, Brian, for helping with um, all of the YouTube uh, management and uploads and edits. That's just like, you, you could already see on this call how many folks are working uh, asynchronously, but also collaborating once a week and um, pushing out all of these different styles of content um, and contributions. And it just, it, it takes a village and we're, and we're gonna just only become even more um, uh, productive and streamlined as time goes on. So uh, thanks everybody. Um, thanks, yeah, Ryan Duty. thank you for pointing me in the right name, Pujamak. Already so many contributors, I can't keep everyone straight. So yeah, thank you everybody. Thanks uh, Nate, Alex Rikas, Code Mathics, Pujamak, and Big Sky for joining the call and, and thank you guys in the audience. Um, that's it for me. Thanks, everybody. Uh, also, Robin, huge shout out to Robin. Robin is the heart and soul. She is uh, driving huge, huge energy. So thank you, Robin, for hosting. Uh, I had a blast, everybody. Can't wait to do this again soon. And I and I hope uh, you know some, this really resonated with somebody who's listening. And uh, you know, we, we the next great DAO contributor comes uh, from the call today. Awesome work, everybody. Cool. Take care, guys.